of the, um, we've got some kids here with parents. So this presentation was designed um, as a tool for families. So you will hear me talking a little bit to parents, giving them um, tips about how to manage devices, um, conversations, all of those things. But um, kiddos, you that are here, you will also gain some good knowledge about um, different apps that you can use to help protect your eyes through the screen, um, how to spend your time, and maybe how to help your parents um, you know, understand why do you wanna be on your phone so much? Why can't you get off that video game? Why won't you turn off your screen? So we'll give you some tools there. Good, okay, nobody's on a sinking ship. That's exciting. I'm really excited to see that. I'm really excited to see that. Isn't that a fun tool? I love to use um, polls in my classes. So, okay, great, good. All right, so here is the plan of what we are gonna do tonight. I have one more thing that you are going to want to scan. Um, if you scan that, parents, kiddos, you can scan this. Um, let me put in the chat, actually, I'm gonna stop share for a second. I'm also going to put a link in the chat that you um, will want to hold on to. It is the document that I'm gonna share. There is a ton of information in it. And so my goal for tonight is really just to give you guys the tool. I'm gonna talk you through it, um, tell you a little bit about what's going on in the world today around technology use, why it's actually a really good thing and that we can really learn to use it for some really great powers in our families. Um, and then I'm, um, Going to give you some conversation points. Uh, okay, so there's a link in the chat. And then you also can um, follow along here on the screen. All right, if at any time you have any questions, you can type them in the chat. Here's what we're gonna do this evening. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about why technology is good um, and how to start the conversation in your home. The document that I sent for you guys to click on, it has live links. So there's a lot of live links in it that every almost, I would say 75% of the slides are clickable, okay? So anything that you're like, oh, I'd really like to learn or more about that, or I don't understand how that works. Um, you just click through and you can get the more detail on whatever that tool is, all right? So we're gonna start there and then I'm gonna spend about 10 minutes. It's really important on culture. So the culture that's going on in your home around how you talk about screens, parents, how are you using screens? Um, so we're gonna have a good conversation there. Then I'll pause for a minute, see if you have any questions on uh, something I call freedom ladders and screen agreements. Mrs. Harden loves like silly fun words. Those of you that have me in class, how many words do I use that you're like, what is that, <laughs> right? Austin sometimes will come up with good words too in class. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about those aspects and then I'll take questions. And then the last 15 minutes or so, um, I'm going to talk about the actual apps. So, you know, the word parental control, what tools do we use? Where do I find them? How do I get started with them? How much do they cost? Do they work on an Android and an app? Ah, all the things, all the things that I have pulled my hair out with over and over and over. All right, so let's get started. Parents, kids, technology is not the enemy. Did you know that there's a very strong chance that you are going to meet your husband or your wife online? You are going to find tons of friends online. You are going to find places all over the world that you wanna travel through your screens. So technology itself, God has allowed it for a reason, for a really good, awesome reason. And we love you guys. And so we wanna use it as a tool to equip you. We want it to become a weapon for good and not evil because it certainly can be used in very evil, very difficult, very harmful ways in the world. So our goal is not at all to, you know, parents, our job is not to put our kids in a bubble and protect them from the sin of the world. We are to train them up as they need to go so that they can step out confidently with the tools of who they are, who God made them to be, what they do when they encounter the sin and how to grow through it. So the goal of the Calm Technology Plan, when I get into that, is really an opportunity. And every time God brings the dark parts of technology into the light in your home, it's a party. I'm not saying you have to hokey pokey in the middle of your kitchen, but I'm saying praise the Lord that that is an opportunity for you to guide your kiddo through that. 
So I really want you to turn the condition of your heart into gratitude and joy when those moments occur in your house. So kids that understand online safety, they are empowered, they are future leaders, they are ready, they widen your world. Um, the job market and technology is huge. We want you guys to understand how these social media platforms work and how um, everything is connected so that you can be innovators in that area, right? And then again, you guys also get to use this um, for friendships for uh, entertainment, for some really fun, for dance moves, right? All the things that we're using technology for. So major important point, technology is good, all right? Okay, second, resources and insights to start your family talking. It looked like from that first survey, some of you guys are kind of just right at the beginning of trying to figure out what do we wanna do? Where do we wanna start? How do we wanna handle this? So when you click around on the links inside this, you will see all kinds of different like, 29 questions to ask your kids about what you see on your screen today. Um, what did you learn on TikTok today? Um, who are you talking to? Um, what do you think screens should be used for? Why do we have them in our family? Do you think we handle them well? Um, I really can't stress enough parents that these conversations need to be first in the parent team and then second with the kids. Kiddos are not gonna support rules, restrictions, guidelines, that they have no insight into what your goal is and how you're trying to guide their hearts um, and protect them in a way that they can actually grow through it. If they just feel like you've put a lid on their technology, they're gonna lie to you. They're just gonna go around your back. They're gonna sneak, they're gonna go to their friends' houses and they're gonna get what they wanna get without you. If they feel like you wanna work with them, you wanna trust them, you're not gonna freak out when porn shows up on the screen, not even kidding. You guys got to be ready for those conversations with them. So when you are prepared and when you are equipped, that is when you really begin to just light a fire in your family with technology because you're ready to have the conversations and to teach your kiddos about what to do next. So there's a couple of links inside here. There's some quizzes, parents, that you can take about what your screen time personality is. Um, you can talk to your kids a little bit more about how much they've been impacted during um, CDL, at-home learning, the pandemic, and look at those numbers. I mean, wow, such a huge jump in screen use. And then um, this down here is about a 40-minute video. I teach an influencer class at Valor, and my students actually um, watch the video, The Social Dilemma. Have any of you watched it? You can raise your hand. If any of you have seen it, put your hand up. Um, older kids fantastic resource. Okay, so this is a really great, good, I like seeing, Riley saw it. Um, it's a great way to understand what's going on behind the screen. Good, Jen seen it. So it really will help give you an understanding of why when you get a notification, all of a sudden you look up and it's like six hours later and you're like, where am I? What's happening? Why do I have chocolate on my cheek? <laughs> okay, so it will give you a, a good idea of what's going on and how these major companies are using your phones to try, try to control your behavior, right? It's you become a product. So if you wanna watch that, it's actually my influencer class and they are analyzing that movie. Um, I would say for any kids, you know, 10, 11, 12 and older parents, you might wanna watch it first, but it's a great resource. So, all right, so that moves us on to the CALM technology plan. CALM stands for C, culture. A is how you automate what's going on. Cause I don't know about you, but I do not know how to like do the coding and the checking and the following and the, all the things. So I need something that's gonna automate and tell me what's going on with all my kiddos devices and how do I keep track of it all? Um, learning, so how do we learn through what the numbers show us? And then how do we motivate our kids into right behavior, right behavior with God, right, to, right positioning of their heart, right behavior towards us. So how beautiful are the feet of those who carry good news? And this Calm Technology Plan will help you parents help your kids carry good news out through social media. We will be light, bright, and polite. All right, first up is culture. So there's two main things that I want to cover here when it comes to family culture. I can sit here and I can tell you about the greatest parental control apps that are 100% foolproof and nothing will get through them. And I can tell you about all the great ways that you can check and manipulate and keep and hold and buy and earn. None of it is going to work if you do not have a culture in your home of trust, of transparency, of honesty, of submission to Jesus Christ, of understanding we are broken sinners, of figuring out that we all make mistakes, of forgiveness, of togetherness, of safety. 
So I can't stress enough that even though I'm going to give you some great tools to use in your homes, you have to be having these conversations with your kids and you have to be creating a environment where they feel like they can come to you and talk to you and share with you. So I want you to spend a little bit of time as you get started with some of these tools on that aspect. A screen agreement is something that you would sit down together as a family and it might look something like this. We agree that our screens are a gift from God. Okay, this is in your um, in the document, so you guys can use this as a template. But this is an example of the things that you think. Oh, I didn't even think we'd actually have to say that out loud, but you really do, and your kids need to be a part of it. They are to be used for connection with friends and family, for work opportunities, independence, entertainment, and fun. We should always seek to use them to be light, bright, and polite. There's a guy that wrote a book called Light, Bright, and Polite. Lots more detail there on it. It's great. Um, we will help each other remember screens are a privilege. They're a privilege. They're a blessing. They're not required. You don't need them to breathe, eat, walk, move, grow, get a job, swim. You don't need them. So they are a privilege. They are to be used for entertainment only once we have fulfilled our responsibilities to God, family, school, sports, friends, our mental and emotional health. We're going to be honest about what we see on our screens and who sees us through them. There are people on the other side of your screens and anything that goes into your screen goes out into the world and you cannot get it back. Cannot get it back. Vanish mode doesn't work. Snapchat screen screenshot. Okay. Doesn't work. It's out there. We will use screens in moderation. We will have self-control with them. We will only use one screen at a time. Parents, this is the thing for me. I'm like, okay, family movie night. And I look over and everybody's looking at their screens. <laughs> I'm like, just pause the movie and wait one screen at a time. That's too much. Okay. So one at a time, we will seek to be present with the people in front of us before we respond to the person on the screen. Um, for me and my family, we actually take this even a step farther in that we seek to be present with the people in front of us. We also though, if someone is sitting, if they've removed themselves from a family area and they are sitting using their phone for something and you want to know where the broom is, you don't just come in and go, mom, I can't find the broom. Get up, help, okay? There's also a point of when you're done, could you help me find the broom? Because kiddos, you guys know that sometimes you're in the middle of a text conversation with a friend or you're checking a sports schedule or you're posting something on Instagram that you just spent like 50 minutes like writing and deleting and rewriting and you're filtering and you finally got it all great and you really can't stop at the moment and go get the broom, <laughs> okay? So it's okay to also respect when you come into someone's space they are ha there is life happening. They are, they are sharing. There are things going on through their screen. It's okay to respect that. And parents, it's okay to respect that from your kids. But then when you're done, you put it down and you go help your kids. So it's a two-way back and forth of keeping promises. We agree that screens should not be on for more than four hours a day, whatever you guys decide, whatever time you're going to turn it in. We do not have or we share our passwords. Anyone can see our screens anytime just like God sees us. That's a really important one. Parents, I um, highly encourage you that, I'm gonna stop just for a second, sharing. Um, I really encourage you parents to begin the process of transparency with your kids as early and as soon as possible. Because if your kids grow up in a home where we just were around, like we have one place where we see everybody's schedules and we have Life 360 where we know everybody's at all the time and mom follows me on Instagram and dad's private messages me on Facebook when he needs me to do the laundry. And like, it's really, really important that you become involved with what's going on in your kid's screen as soon as possible and you create integrated systems that keep you all connected everything from bank accounts you know your bank accounts here come take my phone look see what's going on i was highly challenged in a season of my life when someone was like you know if your kiddo came up and just if my kids walked over and just took my phone what would my first response be <clears throat> but if i want to go over and take my kid's phone and they respond that way I say that's a problem. So there's a lot that I had to do personally in my life with integrity, taking the passwords off my phone, being willing to, you know, I look for opportunities to ask the kids, hey, will you get my phone and text so-and-so about such and such? Um, so I think it's really critical that parents, we do the work involved to make sure that we're walking the walk that we're talking. And it's not easy. Um, it takes some some hard work, at least it did for me to just, it's just that sense of like, what if they hit the wrong button and accidentally, 
you know, buy 12,000 Fortnite skins. Don't touch anything. <laughs> but they don't mean to. And you work it out. The transparency and the honesty is much more important. Okay, so the next up is the tool that I want to share with you guys. So I call this the freedom ladder. You can implement this in your home in any way that feels like it would work. It can be conceptual. It can be a literal. I, there's three slides in here. So I'll give you an example of this tool in practice. And then um, I'll give you a template that you can print and sit with your kids and they can actually fill it out with you. Um, but it ultimately gives you an idea. And this is a broad range. Um, you know, I have six ish teenagers that and they have all they're all at different levels in this. Um, and they all started in different places. Some of them moved up three and then they went way back down to the K through five <laughs> when they were in 11th grade. So, you know, it's just a matter of understanding the, the benchmarks of where that kiddo is at, um, what they need and what they're working on. And the phone itself, hear me when I say this, the phone itself is not the problem. When your child begins to, kids hear me, when you are short tempered with your parents, when you have a bad attitude, when you are not getting your homework done, when you can't speak nicely to your friends, when you don't do your chores, when you won't clean your room, you are exhibiting that you do not have the self-control, the responsibility, the accountability, or the maturity to have a device that you can literally create life or death with, literally. So it's important that you understand that your parents are watching for behaviors in you the, a phone is, is no different than driving a car, owning a gun, being able to vote, buying a lottery, getting on an airplane, okay? These are really, really big things. So it's not that they're trying to keep you from your friends or they don't want you to have Instagram. What they're looking for is that you have the ability to process what comes in and what goes out of that phone with maturity and responsibility. So there's a couple of suggestions um, for the age development to the right here. Um, things to look for are kids have no problem when it's time to turn it off. If you if your parents have given you limits on your phone and they come in at 1130 and you're supposed to be off and you're on your phone, what does that tell them? How do you feel when your mom says she's going to pick you up at five and she just rolls in around six and goes, oh, sorry, I got busy. It's the same feeling. Okay. So you, your parents have to be able to count on you, but when they come in and they repeatedly seeing you be trustworthy with your phone, they're like, oh, okay. So shutdown hours, um, learning to moderate on your own, learning to put it down. It doesn't come to the dinner table. Your phone's not coming out all the time. It's not more important than the people around you. A lot of those things I covered um, in culture. Um, and then slowly over time, what happens with the freedom ladder, and this is what I love about it. Uh, let me give you the example. So here's an example, okay? So let's say that um, Mrs. Neal really wants to get TikTok, okay? She really wants to be able to have TikTok and she wants to go into her room with her phone and make a TikTok with her friends this summer, okay? So right now she can text and she has Instagram and she has YouTube. And sometimes on the weekends, her parents let her take her phone into her room and hang out with it and, and watch YouTube and, and whatever, okay? So what needs to happen is that Mrs. Neal needs to say, mom, I... I am the next TikTok famous person here, okay? You are holding back my potential. I mean, who doesn't think that Mrs. Neal has TikTok famous potential? Okay, so she's gonna come to her mom. <laughs> so now agrees with me. And she's gonna say, <laughs> she's gonna say, mom, I, I need this, okay? So here's what I'm willing to do to show you that I am ready for this responsibility because the first thing it's gonna be is not fun, is not exciting, is not a way to increase friendships. It's gonna be a distraction. So you have to be solid in all the other more important areas before your parents let in this other big distraction. So Mrs. Neal is gonna say, I am gonna get high, all my grades higher than a C. I'm gonna get an A in science actually. And I am gonna turn in my phone by nine o'clock every night. I'll put it in our spot that we agreed to as our family. I'm not gonna use it outside of those times. And if any of my friends do or say or text me anything weird, I'll come talk to you about it. I'm gonna do all that stuff for the next two months. Does that sound good? Okay, okay, great. And then I'm gonna not go over three hours total. Once you give me TikTok, I will only do it for one hour a day. I promise, I just wanna try it out, okay? And I'm gonna stay on restricted mode inside TikTok so I don't see all that stuff that just like totally creates more and more sin. So I don't wanna see any of that. I'll limit my time and mom, 
Okay, I will let you see my TikToks before I post them, but don't be gross and weird about it. Just, it's just, it's, they're not gonna be bad, it'll be fine. Okay, so Mrs. Neal comes up with an agreement with her parents and her parents are like, okay, we're willing to try this. This is how the freedom ladder works. So parents are gonna be looking for some of these things over here on the left. Um, they can discuss difficult topics openly and honestly. They're not keeping things in the dark. They're good to their siblings. Um, they have good eating habits. Exercise and health are a priority. Anger management is good. If you have an outburst in your home because your brother took your sock, what's to say you're not going to have an outburst online when you're texting duh, 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 and all of a sudden you're, I mean, can you imagine your angry outburst is out in the world? Can you imagine if your parents, if your siblings went online and just said all these horrible things about you anytime they were upset? It's all the same heart. It's all the same heart that it comes out of. So that's why this, this piece of, of controlling our hearts, guarding our hearts, the fruits of the spirit is so critical to these conversations, parents. So then there's a blank one inside that document that you guys can print. It asks the questions along the side. So this is the, the first big tool that I wanted to share with you guys um, before we move into apps and actual tips for what like parental control things to use. So, um, okay, break for questions. Are there any thoughts, questions about culture, the freedom ladder, the screen agreement before I move on? No questions? All right, okay. So, up next, so we did the C, which is culture, your screen agreement, your freedom ladder, conversations about what do we use technology for in our house. Next up is A, the automate. So there's a lot going on here, which is why, again, you guys can head over to that document, click around, review all of the, the different ideas. Um, what do you guys have? Tell me in the chat, do you have Androids or iPhones? I want to know what VCSI is. What are you guys using? No phones, Apple. Okay, Android, iPhones, Android, good. Okay, lots of iPhones. We're a Mac fam. Okay, good to see. Okay, good. So there's a lot of really good, positive, great things going on um, with iPhones uh, in terms of within the, the iPhone devices themselves. Um, do any, I don't know if any of you use um, they have built-in screen time. So iPhones have some really fabulous built-in um, like parental controls, monitoring, options to see how much time you've been spending on games, entertainment, social networking, total. Um, it's free. It comes with the phone. Your parents can put codes on it if they want. You have access to it. You can use it to turn, have your phone go on and off at certain times to help you with moderation. Um, so iPhones have a lot of those great features. Um, Androids do as well, but the benefit for Androids is that they just play nicer with all these other apps. Um, my family went through about three months because we had half Apples and half Androids and my husband is a total like tech geek and I am just like a visual, ooh, how pretty. So I love iPhones and he loves Samsungs and um, we really, and our kids had all different devices. So as much as I'd love to tell you to, you know, go straight for the app that looks like it has the features you want, I don't want you to have to go through what we did, which we paid for services and then realized later that we couldn't actually use them because they didn't work, play nice with all of our phones. So make sure that you are checking for that when you look around. Parents, if you were in the category of, I'm not sure I'm just starting out, you want to start with something like Custodio um, or Screen Time um, or what's exactly on their phone. Now, the reason for this is that this is going to do complete shutdown times. You're going to be able to monitor and see everything they do. You can turn their phone off from your phone. Um, you're going to have a lot of, it's going to be a much more simplistic and it's going to remind your kids often that you're in charge of their phone, that you own their phone, um, you're going to get weekly reports, and it's got a lot of information in there just about what they're doing. They're gonna get a lot of messages that say, that site is restricted or you can't go there. Parents, you're gonna see text messages back and forth, you're gonna see DMs, you're gonna see all those kinds of things that, that are happening. Um, once your, your kiddo graduates from 
that kind of base, really strict, simplified, lots of protection around the device. I recommend at that point you move to something like Bark or Circle. Um, and the reason for that is because these become um, kind of just glimpses into what your child is doing. So they can be led by you as a parent. So if you have an older kiddo that you want to trust, have some freedom with, um, you're just going to get a report that maybe says, hey, your kiddo visited a site that had the word depression in it, or hey, your kiddo visited a site that had this inappropriate word in it. Um, and so you will just be able to go to them and say, hey, can you tell me what's going on with this? Kids, when your parents come to you and say, what's going on with this? What do you do? How do you respond? Do you freak out? Get off my phone, leave my phone alone. That's my phone. Why are you touching my phone? Okay, no. The response is, well, one of my friends at school is having a really hard time and they're going through some stuff and I was trying to figure out how to help them. And so I just needed to find some advice. I wasn't sure if I could talk to you about it because you're friends with their mom and I don't want you to tell their mom. And I know if you find out, then you're going to feel like you have to tell your mom and that's really hard. And so I just, I don't, just didn't want to talk about it. Be honest with them. Parents, find the solution that honors your child. Trust that they have good intentions and a good heart and they are really genuinely, I can't even tell you how much of their social life is being built through their phones um, because people feel safe to, to say things, to share things. They also use it for attention. And because y'all are raising some really sweet, great, compassionate, kind, giving, generous children, they pay attention and they wanna help. They wanna like, they wanna share, they wanna step in, they wanna care. So give them the chance to um, share those things with you when they're happening. So these are a couple of the apps that I recommend. Um, Bark has phenomenal customer service. Use it. Sign up for the tr free trials before you guys go and um, spend a bunch of money on them. They're not even that expensive once you do get into them. Remember that each kid may need something different and get the kids involved in choosing. Stay flexible. You might have to move, try something, and then it doesn't work. The circle program actually goes through your router. So that would be something where if you have an iPad and two Samsungs and a PlayStation and an Xbox and all of these things, um, the circle system is going to actually filter through what's anything that goes through the internet. Those are what you're going to get reports on versus Bark and these other um, apps, which are actually going to monitor the device itself. Um, but again, remember that these are just tools. Hear me when I tell you the only parental control you genuinely have access to is the condition of your child's heart. You do not have full parental control over any of these things. You do not have control over what they see. I don't even really like the word parental control, <laughs> but it's what they use. So we have to go with it. Um, on the aspect of remembering that each kid may need something different. I'm really not a fan of that's not fair. And he got that, so I should get that. Kids in my house don't get what they want. They get what they need. And I mean, kiddos, do you want to be like compared to your brother or sister that has completely different set of skills, talents, clothes, longer legs, shorter legs, different abilities? Maybe they're funny and witty and you're athletic and he's smart. And I, do you want to be held to the same standards as them? So it's really important that you give your parents some grace and understanding when they're like, look, everybody's going to get what they need to grow into their best selves. And that might mean that this kiddo gets to have Instagram before you do. But that's because of this, this, and this. And once you do this, this, and this, then we'll get you there. And that will be different. This kiddo also doesn't get to go to sleepovers yet. And you do because you have different strengths and qualities than they do. Okay. So it's all, I always like to say that um, fair is where you get cotton candy. Okay, so everybody gets what they need, not what they want when it comes to um, working on this through siblings. So, all right, so we've gone over culture. Um, we've gone over how to automate it with these apps and tools. Let's talk a little bit about how to learn from what you find. So, okay, once you start to see um, data points coming in for your kids. Okay, oh my gosh, they were, okay. For me, I had some really eye-opening moments, okay? I realized, I guess I never said you can't wake up at 5 a.m. and go on YouTube. I guess I never actually spoke that sentence. <laughs> so I guess I need to do that. <laughs> okay. So you start to realize like, wow, we need to actually say like, this is too much time. That is not good. 
because everything has an opportunity cost. So when you see the data coming in of how much time they're spending in different places, you can start to coach them through that. One of the things that um, I like, I have two 15 uh, year old girls right now. They just in the last year got TikTok. And so the conversation, they built up their learning ladder, grades are good, all that stuff. Um, but the conversation was, okay, you're not going to add Instagram, then add TikTok, then add, and then you don't just add an hour every time you add an app. That's not how it works. So tell me about how you're going to alter the other ways you're using your phone right now to keep it in moderation. And so we had, you know, one of them said, I think I'm going to actually delete Snapchat. It's just like this group of my weird friends and I can never keep up with their streaks. So I'm out. And then another one, you know, said, I actually only use Instagram for my photography and blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to cut that back. And so for the first month, we watched that. And sure enough, Instagram went down, TikTok went up, and I began to be more concerned about the overall time instead of the specific app. So look for um, those benchmarks, help them understand the big picture. Your day is a closet. You have 24 hours of time. You're not going to get more. The more you cram into that closet, the less efficient, the less focused, the less you'll be able to hear God. So understand the trade-off and the opportunity cost when you're growing through the learnings. Um, and then the last message, well, actually on this one, I, I want to point out as well the, the parent teams that we have on here. Um, it's really important that you guys get on the same team about how you're going to be handling this. And it's okay if it's like my husband managed the numbers and the learning and the data. And then I managed a lot of the conversations. So he would come to me with like, here's what's going on. Here's the data, you know, blah, <laughs> because I didn't love to go into the app and look at it all and see how it's growing and changing. And so I would go, okay, here's the things we need to discuss. So have a, a plan as a parent team of who's going to keep track of this stuff. Cause if you install the devices and then you just forget about it, what does that teach your kids? Oh, they think I'm fine. They're not even checking up and they're not talking to me. Um, the last one is motivate. So how do you motivate behavior and keep kids moving back into the ideas of, I made a mistake, I learned something, you corrected me, why did you correct me? Why is it important that I make good choices with my technology? Because sin added to sin, added to sin, and then it just amplifies it. So how do we connect? How do I create a safe place to motivate their choices? How do I have conversations with them? and be ready with the data that I find. Um, my dad used to tell me all the time growing up that the, the biggest cause of strife in my life would be trading what I want most for what I want at the moment. And there's been a lot of moments in my parenting journey where I've seen a kid on a phone again, or I've seen something posted and I just don't wanna deal with it or whatever it is. And I, I gotta tell you, you're gonna, every day you wait, the sin grows, the problem grows, the consequences grow. Your kids really need you to step in, not in guilt, not in shame, not in bullying, not in with restrictions and rules, with curiosity. What's going on here? What happened? I'm sad. I'm worried for you. We've talked about this. I want you to have more freedom. Um, I would encourage you parents to make it your goal. The last year that my son, who I just launched, was in my home, his, we had no, with the exception of Life360 on his phone, so I could see when he left work and where he was going. Um, we had no parental control apps. He used it all himself. I have no idea how much time he was on it, um, but I did know he was at work on time and his grades were staying up and he was being good to his siblings and he was going to the gym. And so I could see the fruit, right? And, and it was good because it was opportunities for me to notice how much he, but he had that opportunity in my home. So I would make it the goal that when your kids become seniors and they're about ready to launch off into trade school, college, gap year, wherever they're going, whatever they're going to do, um, that they've had some time under your roof with that full freedom of like, wow, I was accidentally, I was searching for number two pencils and this is what I got. <laughs> Yikes. Okay. And they may come to you and talk to you about that or not. Um, but you have the, the opportunity to be there. And to, you know their hearts, parents, you know your kids, you know what's going on with them. So um, I love Gospel Tech. That's again, all of these slides are filled with links. Um, that's a great resource to just continually be pointing your kids back to what is technology used for? What does the Bible say about it? Why do I care so much about it for you? Um, how do I help you with it? And then this last slide um, has some actual ways that you can applaud your kids when they're making good choices 
and then you can address difficult things. So I, I, I love reciting in the mirror while I'm driving. How am I going to ask that question with love, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, forbearance, and self-control? <laughs> okay, so um, parents, these are just some ways to say, you know, hey, I saw that you kind of made a mean comment to that boy's video, or you know, or you made a mean comment to that boy. I like the way you handled, did or didn't handle this well. Um, your screen use is really staying steady, even on the weekend and over vacation. What's changing? Why aren't you on it so much? Um, um, let's see. Um, I saw that post that you made about your sister. That was light, bright, and polite. So just applauding when they uphold the screen agreement and then addressing, help me understand why you wanted to share that picture of you. <laughs> okay, just a, a general, um, how did that affect your friendship? Uh, I noticed that you, parents, it's really important you understand that kids don't, they don't process through the same lens that we do. I don't like things unless I really like them. So I scroll past a lot of stuff. Your kids, they like things, they don't even read them. <laughs> like they just click the buttons. So I've had many conversations with my kids where I'll be like, so I saw you liked so-and-so's post about such and such. I didn't know you believe that. And they will literally look at me and go, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so it, it's, and it's not their fault, but it does help them check that, you know, because your kids will tell you that they are, you know, they're watching those numbers and they're looking for friends that are affirming and throwing flames and all the emojis and all the yes bays on their, on their information because that is affirming for them. And so you can constantly be asking them like, why did you post that? How did you feel? You know what? And some of it is just, they're just being kids and they want to have friends and share and be in the group and they're figuring themselves out and they're in the most difficult season of their life. Adolescence is brutal right now, right? Who am I? What do I want? Why do I look this way? How do I feel? And oh, by the way, here's 50,000 people that aren't real to compare myself to. It's so hard for them. So be patient with them while they're, while they're figuring it all out. Um, so this is my last slide before I'll take any questions. Um, here's some ideas about if you are going to jump into um, this topic with your family, don't do it on a Wednesday night at seven o'clock after soccer and volleyball and a big, like, no. Okay. This, these are not just casual whenever they come up conversations. These must be intentional Saturday morning when you're fresh Sunday afternoon, right after church, a Sunday evening family meeting. Um, these need to happen during times where your kiddos are fresh. They know that it's coming. It's scheduled. We're going to sit down, bring your phones, we're going to talk about these things. We're going to create a plan. We're going to send. Okay. So you need to kind of be ready for that and then have times in mind every other Sunday, we're going to meet and see how, how it's going. Okay. How are we doing? Um, and then the, the word screen unity is in here. And it's just a word that I, I personally really like to um, kind of elaborate on in groups and communities like ours, because we are each other's keepers. So students, if you see your friends doing, posting, saying, using technology in a way that you know is not gonna lead to good things, it's not Christ honoring, their grandma wouldn't approve of it and Mrs. Neal's gonna kick them out of school if she sees it, send them a note. Hey, I noticed your post about blah, blah, blah. Are you okay? That didn't seem like you, okay? So we have a, a responsibility to each other to help each other. Um, parents be on, and it's okay to say, I've had to ask all my kids like, can, what's appropriate? Can I like, can I say sweet things on your posts or can I, can I just like them? Some of them are like, I don't care, mom, you know, we'll say whatever you want. Some of them are like, you can like it, but that's it. <laughs> so, you know, but it's important that they know that you're watching what they're posting, that you're seeing what they're doing um, and that they're, your friends and family are as well. And they're a part of that. So um, there is no such thing as privacy, especially with our devices. So everyone is seeing, and, and I love telling the story of how my oldest went for a job interview and they pulled up his Instagram account and was like, okay, so tell us about this. <laughs> okay. So it's good stuff, right? It, it's, it's really important that you guys understand that you are partnering with your future self. And if, if you're, you know, putting something on there that your, you know, 30 year old self might not really want to see on the, the web probably a good idea to pass that one by. So let's help each other, parents. Kids, let's help each other. I am teaching a class 
um, starting next week at Valor about how to be an influencer, how to use social media. We're going to talk about how to gain followers, how to stay um, honoring to our values and our beliefs and who God says we are while still choosing fun music and making good TikToks and, and wearing fun clothes and doing all the things that he would have us do. Because I'll tell you right now, if, if the body of Christ leaves the internet, we're going to be in a world of hurt. So we need to raise these kids to step in with confidence and light and be the leaders and the game changers in this, in this space. So, um, okay, let's see, I have a question. Um, when is it a good age for kids to get their first phone? Great question. So, um, the cool thing is, is that, um, the manufacturers are figuring out that parents, kids are wanting phones earlier and earlier, and parents really aren't wanting to drop, you know, five, $600 on a smartphone. So there's some really cool phones out there. There's a Google phone that just came out. Um, can't remember the name of the other one, but it looks just like a smartphone, but all it does is text and take pictures. And I think you can, I think you can watch a couple of like, you can load videos and things on it. So it allows for some freedom. Um, I think that as soon as, um, as soon as your child exhibits that, you know, they're all going to say, well, so-and-so has a phone and such and such has a phone and, blah, 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 and I can't blah, blah, blah. Okay. So that's the time to get the freedom ladder out and, and start having the conversations. When I see that you are able to remember to clean your room, when I see that you're, you know, you're, you're doing great with your schoolwork, then let's talk about it. Um, my, one of my kiddos wanted a phone so bad that they saved up their money and rode their bike to the store and bought like a little flip phone that had like a hundred minutes on it, <laughs> like a few years ago, just because they just, it had did nothing. Like you could call people. It did nothing, but they were so desperate to have a phone. So I think it's good to talk. To, it's more about the maturity of the child. Um, and I mean, honestly, like I know some fourth and fifth graders that are more mature than some 10th and 11th graders. And, you know, for me, circumstantially, I have a blended family. And so phones came into my home earlier than I wanted. But part of it was because I wanted our kids to be able to communicate with their other parents when they were in our house and vice versa. And so we wanted that communication channel to be open and easy for them. Um, so we allowed them. So again, family circumstances are different. Um, you can look into some of those phones that might feel a little bit safer and give them the opportunity to prove that they can text and, you know, and quite frankly, not lose it. We had one kiddo that I thought was ready and then lost it. And so our rule is if you've lost it, you have to pay to replace it or wait six months to try again. <laughs> so they had to wait another six months. So um, that's another piece. You know, if they're taking, um, if you have a kiddo that's a gamer, watch how they're handling their headphones. And their mouse and the screen if they're leaving them all over if the batteries are left all over if the you know gosh and it's okay parents to say you know hey i i really thought you might be trending towards some of these freedoms this is a sign to me that you're not quite able to, to process how do i help you it's not shame they're kids they're acting their age they're childish they're they're excited they're busy they have stuff to do and places to go and z bars to eat and that's a great thing so we don't want to discourage that. We just want to say, we want you to have the phone be positive and great for you. So we're going to wait until some of these other things line up. So I hope that kind of answered your question a little bit. Um, let's see. Thumbs up, a few questions. Thank you, Jen, for the feedback. Um, totally agree. Thank you, Riley. Kids, do you have any questions for me? Anything you want your parents to know or understand or share about you know, what it's like to have a phone and use social media. Well, I know, Mindy, that some of the middle schoolers were asking me, because um, in the middle school, especially, they always are like, I want a phone. So-and-so has a phone. And a lot of families start with computers first instead of phones. And I see a lot of middle schoolers get themselves in trouble on social media on a computer. So maybe could you talk a little bit about how, even though we've been talking a lot about phones, we're actually really just meeting all social media access? Mm, yeah, like, that's a great point. Even on your computer, because we are a digitally connected world, and I see little kids with laptops now that don't even 
there's not a connection there with, oh, I'm posting something that's really important here. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, yeah, really good point that um, the computers are, are just as um, all of those apps that I mentioned, um, they will work on computers, they'll work on their Google Chromebooks. Um, so you can feel like you can set up a freedom ladder within that space without a phone. So, um, you know, Mrs. Neal brings up a great point. So, you know, maybe the time to get a phone, a mobile device is when you are first using your computer appropriately um, for good, right things. Um, I know for me, like, I think it's, it's a good thing to sit down with our kids' computers ever so often and just say, what are you, what have you been looking at on there? What'd you see? What'd you learn through your screen today? Um, and have conversations with them about what they're seeing and, and what they're doing. Um, it doesn't matter if you're on a phone or if you're on a laptop, it, it's all the same. It's all going out into the world. So there's some really scary um, videos out there. Parents, if you have older kids that just can't quite get it, um, Bark actually had a young a, a woman go undercover as an 11 year old girl and open up social media accounts. It's disgusting. I mean, within minutes, it's absolutely disgusting. So it's really important that you understand how exposed they are, that there are people out there that are so broken, so confused, so lost. They're the people Jesus came for and he needs to see he needs to see, they need to see Jesus in us and they are a mess and it is not, you know, we need to be the, the light, bright, the self-controlled, the regulated, um, aware of what's out there, protecting our kids from it, as well as slowly educating them about the consequences. Um, inside the slides, there's some digital citizenship courses that um, parents, if you have a kid that you're maybe concerned about, or maybe you just say, you know, I went to this seminar and I'm feeling like, I want to take this thing together. Let's just do it. If you get resistance, that's a red flag. Kids, if you are giving your parents resistance about access to your computers, your phone, that's a huge red flag for them. Okay. That, that definitely, and even though maybe all you're trying to do is protect a friend that's not doing well and has been confiding in you, just tell your parents that this is a two way cycle of trust and honor and parents be a safe place for them to share those difficult things and carry those burdens with them. Um, but I would recommend the digital citizenship course because um, it's not even just, you know, we're not just talking about porn and we're talking about gambling and identity theft and stealing your name and putting your picture up and trafficking. And I mean, there is so much. Um, grooming is a huge thing, parents, that goes on online. Kiddos, you may think that you're talking to somebody your age and it's a full grown adult male in Australia that is not up to any good. Um, so it's really important and it's sad and it's scary, but people lie, cheat and steal. We know this, we know what a broken world we live in. This is why we, we really have to stay in touch with who God says we are and we really have to listen for his voice and whisper. And when you feel that like, ooh, you guys know what I mean? Like, I feel it when you like see something on the screen or you're about to do something or um, Riley asked a question about peer pressure, a friend's pressuring you into doing something and you're like, Ooh, that's the Holy Spirit prompting you to like, nope, nope, we got this. Nope. Okay. Whatever you need to do. Oh, my computer died. Just slam the, the thing shut. Okay. Oh, sorry. I don't know. My computer died. Oh, you know what's a great one? My parents see every text that comes in and out of my phone. My parents see everything on my phone. I don't want to talk about this. Blame your parents. It's just fine. Let them be people that can help keep you safe. Yeah, great question about computers as well, because it's it's in all of those places. It's even through, um, I know you guys that play that um, on Xbox and PlayStation and Wii, it comes through there as well. You know, you're playing with somebody, you're talking to them, you don't know who they are. They start communicating with you in difficult ways that feel inappropriate. You leave the room, you just leave the room. And it might be hard because you might be on your way to a victory royale, but you still got to leave the room. It's okay. Um, peer pressure is really hard. And I, I sound so cheesy for me to even say, you know, the whole, they really are your friend. <laughs> they'll, they'll love, you know, when you say, I just don't really want to do that. I don't feel good. That doesn't feel right. I don't want to cause more problems. I just want to stay out of that. Even sometimes you just say, you know what? I did that once and it ended really bad and I got grounded for a month. So I'm not doing it again. Whatever, whatever you need to do to step out of those situations, your parents and your school will have your back. 
Mrs. Harden, I just want to say, you're doing amazing, but I have to go eat dinner now, so. Thank you for being here, Sana. I think we're wrapping up, <laughs> so I'm really glad to see you and hear your voice. okay, good to see you too. You too. Bye-bye. So as a follow-up, um, you guys all have the links to the document that have all the templates in it. You can email me if anything specific is going on and you're confused or need help with anything more. Um, go to that Freedom Ladder. Kids, trust your parents. Parents, trust your kids. Um, know that we can be leaders and use our technology for such good, revolutionary, visionary, amazing, divine callings in our life. And the more that you learn to self-control, to turn away from the sin, um, to step you know, towards what's good, because that's one cool thing about your social media platforms is it's, it's like free therapy. Like if you just go in and like stuff that you want to see all the time, you wake up in the morning and it's like, you got this, you can do this, you're going to have a great day, Jesus loves you, my friends, great, it's his birth. Like, I mean, there are times, you know, you just, you can wake up to the best amount of joy in your day. And then you just, you get to use it in that, that you can use that to infuse you um, to go out into the world into your school and your friendships and, and do some really good, great things. So thank you for the feedback in the chat, parents. I'm really, really glad that it helped. And um, if you need anything else, I'll stay on for a couple minutes if um, you have questions about anything.